Rap politics was good. Mark Supreme here. You know what I'm saying? Representing Strictly Hip Hop 90.7 FM and the Peoria Journal Star. Special shout out to WCBU, our partners over there. And so today we got to bring in Peoria County Health Administrator Monica Hendrickson. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, them numbers going back up. Them numbers going back up. I still be having my mask on. I be little, you know, I got I got one in my pocket right now. You understand me? It's, it's, getting, it's not getting crazy, but we just had to figure out what's going on. So uh, so that's our special guest today. But before we get into that, you already know I got to do a big shout out to my folk over at Sherman's. And I've been saying this for like a year. They hiring, they they paying good, they got upper mobility available. And even if you feel like you don't qualify to work somewhere like Sherman's, you want to apply anyway. And this is why, it is why, I'm going to tell y'all why. So many businesses are needing people to come work that even if you like just kind of don't qualify, you only qualify a little bit, you want to go ahead and just apply because people, is now is the time. If you want to get a job that you ain't got no business having, now is the time to apply. This is the time you go get that job that you ain't got no business having. Just go ahead and apply. And of course, Best Water coming out the tap, my tap and yours, Illinois American Water Company. Uh, good folks over there. And they just uh, broke ground and did a ribbon cutting on some solar stuff. Uh, last week. I don't know exactly what it was, but I know it's healthy and it's good for the environment and I'm all here for it. So as I mentioned before, we have Monica Hendrickson coming on because we just got to figure out what's going on with these Corona numbers. So without further ado, Public County Health Administrator, Monica Hendrickson, what's good? Hi, how are you? What's happening? What's happening? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay. Okay. Um, so I know uh, we spoke last night. You said you have a, a long meeting today. Don't know if that had anything to do with COVID, but I think we need to meet about COVID because it's not what we thought it was about a month ago. What's going on right now? So a couple of things, you know, we are seeing cases start coming up again. And, you know, we do have some seasonal aspects with any type of respiratory illness. It kind of goes up and down. Um, also, we're actually seeing a lot more testing getting done right now, too. And that's because people are dealing with a lot of respiratory issues. I mean, we have high pollen counts, so they're trying to make sure it's just allergies or something else. And so they are starting to see more positives come through. But the good news is, even with numbers on the rise, our hospitals aren't getting to that point of capacity issues that we saw in the winter or with other surges. So there is a little bit of a silver lining, but it is still something that we wanna watch and pay attention to. So uh, hospital numbers aren't as bad. Does that mean that the coronavirus isn't as intense right now? Or what does that mean for what does that mean for us? The biggest thing it really means is that vaccines are working. So the whole point of vaccines is to really make sure a couple of things. One, to try to prevent transmission as much as possible. But for an individual, if you do get COVID, that you're not having such a really strong or severe case so that you're not ending up in the hospitals. So with boosters and all of that, which is the biggest thing you can do right now is if you are eligible, get yourself boosted, um, is that we're now seeing that we're not seeing the numbers in the hospitals because we have enough of that immunity. Now, people are still getting sick, which we knew was going to happen, but they're not going to be as severe as hopefully they were um, this past uh, winter. So when it comes to masking, you know, everybody is we're a, little, we're a little loose right now. We, everybody acting a little freak. We think it is July last year. And, you know, it, it's it's something about, you know, 2020 and 2021. It felt like when it came to coronavirus, for the most part, it felt like we could take the summers off. And then August, September came back in. We had to mask back up. What do we need to be doing now? Um, and are, are you... are are you hearing that, you know, people still need to be masked up even if they're vaccinated? Are there certain places that we need to just take heed? Um, what's your position? So I, first and foremost, great resource that people should try to check and look at is the CDC or Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have a county uh, community map. And you can see there's like three levels. You can be low, medium, or high. Right now, Peoria is into medium. So we went from low to medium. So we're in the yellow. And really, it gives really good um, guidance to people about what they should personally do. First and foremost, you know, your vaccinations, make sure you're up to date. If you got a booster, go ahead and, you know, get your second if that's what you're eligible for. But also, if you know you're high risk, start wearing that mask again, um, just to make sure that you're not putting yourself into any, you know, undue issues where that you might have a severe reaction. So 
you know, we're looking at people over a certain age, individuals that have comorbidities or other illnesses like diabetes is a really big one. If you're diabetic and, you know, our, now that we're, our numbers are coming up, wear a mask and, you know, when you're indoors and especially in congregate settings, you really want to make sure you're putting that mask on. If you're outdoors and you're, and you're spread out, you're totally fine. Continue that practice, but just be much more cognizant now that we're back into that medium level. I know school is almost out. Uh, you know, graduations are happening, things like that, but there's still a couple of weeks left and you got some folks that are doing summer school and of course, folks over in college as well too, doing those summer semesters. What are you hearing from a school standpoint? Uh, do we need to be masking up in schools? Do you think something is going to be coming down uh, from the state level with regards to masking up in schools? So right now, I don't think there's going to be a lot of what we call these mitigations around masking here in the summer. You know, I think it's, again, you, I heard you say you still have your mask somewhere available. I know I have mine all around um, as well. But just, you know, realize that there's going to be a lot of flexibility, possibly when we get back into the fall. And that's, again, because this is a respiratory illness. It always has been a respiratory illness. And we see there's a seasonality to this, right? We see, you know, for the, sadly, two years now, we see a huge surge in the fall, another one in the winter and late spring or mid-spring. And then we kind of have, as you said, that summer off. So we are going to be monitoring that. So get used to kind of the possibilities of it. But we're also in a different situation. We do have vaccines. More and more kids are getting vaccinated. More and more people are also getting their own immunity because they've now gotten the virus maybe once or even twice. And so with that, we should not see as huge as a spike as we saw previously, but um, that warranted those type of mitigations like masking. But again, you know, never say never, right? Is just generally, is there a cause for concern right now or no? You know, right now, not so much. I think the group that should be concerned is if you are in that high risk bucket and you haven't gotten your boosters. I think this is the time that you should be going and get your booster. We're starting to see numbers increase. And if you are eligible for that, go ahead and get that. Again, the, the good news is our hospital, hospitals are not at this huge level. And to kind of give you context of this, um, because I know, like, I have allergies. I've been doing at-home testing because I'm paranoid, right? Uh, <laughs> but at-home testing isn't reported to your numbers that you see on the state website. So just imagine that what you're seeing from the number of total cases is what we call a soft number, meaning that it's what's actually reported to us. Realistically, you could almost double that, and that's how many positives might be out there. So when we say Peoria is averaging, let's say, 75 cases a day, it may be actually closer to 150 cases a day give or take, because of at-home testing. When you, back when we only had testing, all of it was reported to us. When we had 150 cases a day, our hospitalization numbers were a lot higher. And hospitalization numbers are hard numbers, right? You can't pretend to have COVID in the hospital system or pretend to be hospitalized. It's a yes or no, right? It's not like an at-home test. And so those hard numbers that we've been monitoring now still show us in a good position. But we also recognize it can lag, meaning that if you had too many cases build up, you start seeing your hospital numbers increase as well. So we are monitoring it. But as of right now, from what we saw in previous year, uh, cycles, the surge is not looking as intense as the other ones. And what are we dealing with right now? We had we had COVID-19, we had Delta variant, then we had Omicron. What is this variant? Yeah, or is this yeah. the same thing? Like, what is it? What is this? It's a little bit of Omicron, really. It's a it's the next level, the next generation, so to speak, of this right. new iPhone, this right? They, <laughs> yeah. Just dropped. Okay. So it's just the next generation of Omicron, and you know, vaccines. I mean, vaccines. Viruses do this. Viruses are smart. They, you know, they mutate when they learn, like, hey, this variation of me doesn't work anymore. I need to change. That's what they do. And again, the best way to stop these mutations from happening is one, not getting sick, and the best way to not get sick to get the vaccine. Uh, you just spoke about, you know, at-home tests. The government sent out a bunch of uh, a bunch of at-home tests for free so people can test at home. For the people that don't have these at home, what, what testing sites are still available around the city? So the large site in the Civic Center is no longer available, but I would say that mm -hmm. you can look at your provider's offices, the pharmacies. They still offer a lot of that at-home uh, test kits you can purchase or you can get tested on uh, in a clinic setting, if you so choose. I highly recommend if you have it, register and get your test kit at home. It's a good thing to have, especially this time of year. 
where you're kind of debating, is it allergies, you know, or is it something else? Might as well get tested. That way, you know, you're not putting other people at risk because you don't know what they have going on in their homes. You may be able to have 10 days off and have a mild case, but you don't know the person beside you. They may be taking care of an elderly parent or immunocompromised child. They don't have that luxury. So treat everyone with the aspect that they have to take care of an at-risk person and you don't want them to bring, you don't want to be responsible for them bringing it home to others. So there, at, the, at this current time, there are no big sites for testing anymore. No, there's not. Gosh, and when did that shut down? A few, uh, about, oh, oh, I guess it is May now, um, about t- two months ago. Almost. Wow, okay, yeah. okay, good to know, good to know. Um, and lastly, what was lastly? Anything, <laughs> I can't remember. Anything else that uh, that we need to know, um, you know, heading into the summer or just as we work through allergy season, anything coronavirus related that we should know about? As much as I think everyone wants us to be over, and trust me, I am totally in that camp as well. Um, we we can't say it's over yet. Lots of things change. And so be really aware of your own health and the health of those around you. And just, you know, take the opportunity to make sure that if you haven't gone and gotten a screening or seen your primary care provider, go talk to them. This is a great time to do that. That way, you know what your risks are going into the next season. Gotcha. Gotcha. And before I let you go, I want to say you did an awesome job at the, that's what she said. (laughs) At our Inc., uh, your approach, your, uh, what was it, the uh, press conference approach and telling your story and everything that you had to work through and deal with and balance and juggle as being the lead spokesperson for Peoria County with everything Corona related and having to also say, hey, had to be the bearer of bad news. Like, <laughs> back on, y'all might want to do this. Y'all can't go kick it like y'all want to kick it. You had to, you had, uh, you had to be that person that everybody looked at, but you also had to, you know, navigate that space as a regular citizen yourself. So you telling your story was phenomenal. All you women did phenomenal. I had to say. Thank you. And I think, um, you know, our Inc is such a great organization and they do such great work. And so it was lovely experience to be a part of that. Awesome. Awesome. So Monica, uh, our our main health person will be in touch soon. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Take care.